API3 is a platform launched in December 2020 that enables blockchain-based decentralized applications also known as dApps to access the world's data and services via standard APIs. Developers will be able to utilize real-world data through pre-built plug-and-play interfaces, which can be used for accessing certain types of information like location or payment details, without needing external servers or middlemen. In case you do not understand what APIs are, let me explain that a little. APIs also known as application programming interfaces are protocols that enable the transfer of data and services between applications in a well-documented format. For example, cryptocurrency exchanges use an API from CoinMarketCap so they can provide updated market information on their website or mobile app without having it come directly to the platform. Another example is, if you are looking to attach a cryptocurrency payment gateway to your e-commerce website, you will probably attach an API from Coinbase or CoinPayment. This API will give you easy integration access to collect cryptocurrency for your business through your website. So, what problem is API3 trying to solve? DApps are becoming more and more popular, but there is a problem developing around how to integrate them with existing technology. Blockchains were built for different APIs than traditional ones used in cloud services or data centers, so they have trouble communicating between the two. This issue has been called the Oracle problem. Since most DApps are operated via smart contracts, invalid data can lead to disastrous downstream consequences. Especially in financial services such as lending or trading, these corrupted data imports could raise a significant threat to users' assets and more. Therefore, there is a pressing need for a trustable way to import data. So how API3 trying to solve that problem? The fact is that providing accurate external data to on-chain environments is an essential element for creating powerful decentralized apps, platforms, and marketplaces. Therefore, API3 believes that, by building decentralized APIs or DAPIs, API3 has made it easier to take non-blockchain data and import it onto the blockchain. This means that developers won't have to pay a gatekeeper company or use proprietary technology for their application's data to be compatible with blockchains. API3's unique Oracle nodes are hosted by the API providers themselves. This provides a different experience from other third-party oracles because it creates direct relationships and allows for greater autonomy of data sources. The process to create these first-party nodes is called AirNode technology which uses smart contracts on Ethereum to turn APIs into DAPIs. Furthermore, DAPIs are more secure and cost-efficient than other solutions that use middlemen. With first-party oracles, they can be trusted to provide data accurately as well as protect API providers from being taken advantage of by shady third parties. And the token at the center of this process is the API3 token. Before we look into the API3 token, if you have not liked this video please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Now let's quick now let's round this up by looking into the API3 token. The native utility token of API3 is the API3 token. This currency can be used to pay for subscription fees on dApps and also grants users access to AirNodes, which are part of a decentralized network that provides APIs required by developers. Using the API3 token, all community members will be able to participate in governing and increasing the value of their decentralized network. The project incentivizes participation by paying out staking rewards and inflationary rewards for those who stake their tokens in the insurance contract. Let's highlight the API3 token use cases. Staking reward. API3 holders when staking will receive DAPI revenue and inflation rewards. Collateral. An insurance service that protects users from DAPI failures by sharing risks with everyone to minimize losses. Governance. API3 holders have the right to vote to change API3 parameters and features. API3 has a total supply of about 111 million. With a market cap of about $319 million. API3 is founded by Burak Ben Ligere and Heike Vantanen, and the project is currently providing services for some major players such as FTX, X Machina, and Coin Ranking. Many people think that API3 is trying to be Chainlink's killer. However, Chainlink isn't doing anything to transition to first-party oracles. Therefore, API3 is still having a lot of room to grow as their approaches are different. Kindly note that this is not financial advice, therefore do your research. Let us know what you think about API3 in the comment section.
Polyswarm wants to create a decentralized threat intelligence market based on Ethereum smart contracts and blockchain technology. Today, companies and enterprises rely on an ad hoc mixture of antivirus subscriptions, threat intelligence feeds, and assorted dynamic analysis engines to defend against evolving malicious cyber activity. But even with all these subscriptions, it's hard to defend yourself as a company, because we are human after all, and there is always a possibility of mistake. Every day, people bring their own devices to work, from smartphones to laptops and many other smart devices. Therefore it's possible that an employee accidentally downloads a virus. And the moment that employee connects that device to the company computer network, suddenly that puts the whole company in jeopardy of being infected with such virus. Another example. Joe's laptop gets infected with a specific malware and immediately encrypts his data. Therefore he could not use his laptop. The attacker then demands a ransom from Joe, promising him to restore his access to the data on his laptop after paying that ransom. CryptoLocker was one of the first versions of such ransomware back in 2013. And since then, people have derived way more advanced ransomware like WannaCry and many others. This shows you how easy it is to create new malware and how hard it is for cybersecurity professionals to keep up to date with all new threats as they develop at a crazy speed. The annoying part is you might not be able to use one antivirus for a different virus. Another obvious problem with the cybersecurity issue is that the system has often rewarded black hat hackers more than white hat hackers, and Polyswarm is looking to change all that. So, let's look into how does Polyswarm work? To make this very simple for you, we are going to use a simple analogy. Let's say Henry is a regular user of the Polyswarm system, and he has an artifact that he would like to know the accurate assertion of. Note that artifact in this case means a file, network traffic, or URLs. So Henry will then submit artifacts to Polyswarm's network via API or web UI. The bounty is provided with Henry's artifact by Polyswarm to incentivize engine participation. The engines can now scan the artifact and can pass if unsure. Engines make a determination backed by money, reflecting confidence in their assertion. Crowdsourced intelligence and a final score or polyscore are sent back to Henry. The money from the bounty and the assertions becomes the reward, which is securely escrowed in an Ethereum smart contract. After that comes the ground truth. In two weeks, the Polyswarm protocol converges on industry consensus. After finding the ground truth, the system then reward engines that made the right assertion with the money from the initial bounty from the enterprise, plus the money the losing engines included with their assertion. This system is an incentivized threat detection system, unlike in any other multi-scanner, in Polyswarm, there is money at stake. Threat detection engines back their opinions with money at the artifact level, and are economically rewarded and penalized based on the accuracy of their determinations. This process is automated and is executed by software or engines in near real time. Now, let's look into Polyswarm token and its usage. Polyswarm's Nectar, also known as NCT tokens, form the basis of a new market that introduces novel instruments for satisfying demand for timely and accurate assertions regarding the malintent of files, network traffic, and URLs, collectively referred to as artifacts. Nectar's main selling point is being able to obtain threat detection services from security professionals. The Nectar token forms the link between experts and enterprises. The Nectar token can also be used by ambassadors on the platform. An ambassador can post bounties for determining the maliciousness of a file, URL, or another artifact. Lastly, Nectar can be used by security professionals to stake their predictions against artifacts. If they are pretty sure of their findings, they can stake a lot of nectar. The total supply is 1.8 billion plus. With a circulating supply of about 1.5 billion. A market cap of about $48 million. Let's wrap this up. The fact is that there is a growing need for security experts as our world gets more connected. By incentivizing these experts properly, many will avoid black hat activities. Their primary reason for creating Polyswarm and Nectar is to decentralize the process, giving the world a greater security potential available to everyone. There is still massive work for Polyswarm to do, but if they keep going, there is great potential. Kindly know that none of this is financial advice, therefore, do your own research. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, turn on your notification to get notified each time we post another video. Don't hesitate to let us know what you would like us to discuss on this channel, and let us know what you think about Polyswarm in the comment section.
See you next time.